welcome back to our Android Starter course. If you've been following along so far, you'll know that we just got through a lot of the numeric data types. Today, we're going to be looking at some text data types, two specifically, the char and then the string. So the char is a, it's a really simple data type, and essentially you can st store one character. So char stands for character. You can store one character in a variable. So if you look here, you can see that this is my, uh, this is a brand new example project that I have in Android Studio. I haven't changed anything in this project. So if you come into main activity, and then within that main activity, you have your on create function. So everything within these two yellow curly brackets, that's where I'm going to put my example code for this video. So if I want to make a chart, it's actually really easy. I just go ahead and I do val and I can say lower letter equals, and then within single quotes, I can put whatever character I want. So there's my A, and then if I do val lower, or upper letter rather, we'd make that a capital A. So these are both chars. If I hover over that, you can see that is in fact a char data type. Now it's important that if you're trying to make a char, you use single quotes, because if I use double quotes, and then hover over that, you can see it's going to default that to a string. So if you want just a single character, um, make sure to use the single quotes. If you want multiple characters, then use double quotes, and that'll be a string. And we're going to talk about that data type in a minute. So basically, a char data type is fairly simple. I can store whatever um, whatever character I want, including numbers. So anything on the keyboard, I can store and then even beyond that. So like if I do val number equals, and then say three, um, now this, because I have that three in quotes, it's gonna interpret that as a character instead of as an integer. So you can see that is in fact a char data type. I could do um, space. I just put a space within the quotes, then I have a space. I could do, um, I could do a whole bunch of different things. Um, and actually, I can do even a return character, a new line character. I can do a tab. I can do quotes. I can do a backslash, any of that. Um, but there are some caveats on some of those. So if I want to do a new line, you come in here and I could do, um, you, you would think I could just do new line equals and then quotes and hit enter, but that's not going to work because now you have your quotes on two separate lines and that's not going to work. So you have to put a character in between these two single quotes and in Kotlin and in most programming languages, the way that you do that is by what's called escaping something. Um, and the way that you escape something is you put a backslash in front of it. So if I do a backslash, N and N stands for new line. Now the compiler, when it comes through, it's going to interpret that as a new line character instead of an actual backslash N when it prints it out. And if I want to do a tab, so val tab equals, and then I do my single quotes. If I just hit tab there, it's just going to take my cursor out of that. Well, that's not what I want. I want that to be a actual tab character. The way that you do that is with the backslash T. And there's a whole bunch of these that you can do here. Um, you can do a backspace if you want. And backspace equals backslash B. You can do a um, carriage return, which we don't really use too often anymore. But if you're working with older Macintosh systems, then you might run into it. And that's going to be... Um, that's going to be a backslash R. And the difference here, I'll just say this really quick, a backslash N is going to give you a um, new line. So it's going to move you to the next line and it's going to move your cursor back to the beginning. Whereas a backslash R is just going to move your cursor back to the beginning. And this is something that's not standard on really any modern systems, but older Macintosh systems use that. So if you're working with some old data or some old text files from one of those, you might run into that, but probably we're just going to avoid that and use the backslash N in most cases. And then, um, okay, so let's say in my in my character, my char variable, I want to add a quote. So val 
single quote equals, well, I can do my single quotes and then I can put a quote inside of that, right? Well, no, I can't do that. And even the, the uh, IDE is smart enough to not let you do that. So if I hit quote, it automatically gives me a second one and lets me type in between. So now I have four quotes and that's not what I want. So let's get rid of one of those. But even that, now I have a single quote within two single quotes. And this is not going to work because what's going to happen is your compiler is going to come in, see the first one and say, okay, we're opening our quote here. And then it's going to see the second one and say, we're closing our quote. And then it will see the third one and say, okay, well, now we're opening up a new quote and there's no end quote for that. So this is a problem. So what you do is just like you did the backslash and and the backslash T above, you're going to do a backslash quote there. And then for a double quote within a char, you don't have to do that. So just within the single quotes, you could do a double quote for a backslash itself. So let's say, um, let's say I'm building a file path and on windows, all your file paths have backslashes in front of them. So how would I do that? So what I can do here is I can do backslash equals and within the single quotes, if I just put one backslash, it's going to give me an error because the backslash is what we use to escape characters. So if it sees that I have one backslash, it's saying, Hey, this is my escape. Uh, this is, you're trying to escape something, but you don't have anything here to escape. So you actually have to put a double backslash just to print out a single backslash. And, um, and I'll show you all of this in just a minute here. So value, let's say I want to do a symbol and my symbol can be, I don't know, how about a dollar sign? So now, um, if I wanted to go ahead and print all of this data out, there's a function in um, Kotlin and in Android Studio called log, and we'll do log.i for now, and we'll talk about more what that means later, but essentially .i means at the information level, and log is just a function that's going to write some text to your log so you can look at it. Now, this log you can see here is red. That's because that is a um, predefined function that comes in a different package that I haven't imported into my project. So if you go to the top of your project, you'll notice above your main activity class, you have a couple lines for importing. And this is just going to be importing various different packages that you're going to use within the code. Um, so these are different separate code libraries that we are going to use within this um, code file so that we don't we can essentially utilize all the functionality that they have without having to make all of that ourselves. So this log is one of them. If I hit import on that and then scroll back to the top, you can see now I've added a line up here. It says import Android util log. So now within here, I need to give it two different um, strings and a string is just a string of text or a um, just a data type to store text. So the first one is just going to be the tag that it shows up as in the log. We're going to leave that as example and then a comma and then the next one is going to be the actual message we want to print in our log. So just to show you what all of this looks like, um, within a string using a string template, what you can do is if you do a dollar sign within your string template or within your string, and then you give it a variable. Now this is not going to print out dollar sign number, like it says in the code, but rather this dollar sign is going to give you the value of whatever data is stored in number, which in this case is three. So if I do dollar sign number, dollar sign space, dollar sign, new line. Whoops, we got to do all of this within the quotes. And then we'll just do all of these dollar sign tab, dollar sign backspace, dollar sign, I'll skip the character term, we don't need that. That'll mess us up single quote, dollar sign, double quote, dollar sign backslash, and then dollar sign symbol. 
I am going to change one thing here. You can see that we have our um, tag in this log statement set to example, but our project name is actually example project. So if I go to my log and filter on the word example, I'm going to come up with pretty much everything because my project name is going to be all over the place. So I'm just going to switch that to my message. And then down here in the log, um, we should be able to filter on that later. So go ahead and run that on your emulator and then switch over to your log cat. And from here, if you just type in that tag that we did, which is my message, you can see that here I have my three. And then after that, I should have a space and then a new line. So there's that space and then a new line. So it takes us down here. And then we have our tab. After the tab, you have our backspace character, which is going to look like that when you print it. And then a single quote, a double quote, a backslash, and then a dollar sign. Um, so that is actually what's being saved in all of these different characters up top. Now here, you can see that I have my, um, my message within double quotes. So that is actually how you define a string. So if you want to have text that stores more than just a single character, which um, not always, but usually that's what we're going to want instead of just having a single character. Sometimes a chart can be helpful, um, but there's a data type called a string. So if I come in here and I say val, whoops, not val, val message equals double quotes, hello world. So now I have, um, I have this hello world, which is two words, a lot of characters within these double quotes. And if I hover over that, you can see this is of data type string now. Um, so strings are going to work. Um, they're going to work a lot like um, characters in the fact that if you want to put quotes or slashes or tabs or new lines within them, you can do that by just escaping the things like that. So if I wanted to do hello tab world, I can do hello backslash t world, and that's going to give me a tab in between those two words. Um, if I want to access a like a data in a string by its location, I could say val first char equals message and then with if you do square brackets, you have the option to select whatever index you want. So we're going to put zero because the way that these index things is it's going to start counting at zero. So you have H would be zero, E would be one, L would be two, the next L would be three, the O would be four, and then the backslash T for the tab would be five and so on. So if I want to just get a single character from that string, I can just use the, um, I can use this index operator that's built into the string data type. So that's going to return the capital H there. If I want to combine strings, I can, here, let me just make some names here. Val first name equals John. Val second name. <coughs> Smith and uh, full name, Val full name equals. So there's two different ways that you can do this. The first is you can just do what's called concatenation, which is where you use the plus sign just to add them together. So I can do first name plus, we'll put a space in between, and then another plus last name. Um, but that is, oh, I guess I made that second name, first name, second name. Um, but that is actually kind of an outdated way of doing that. And Kotlin isn't going to like it when we do that. It says even here, you can see convert string concatenation to a template. So what a template is going to look like is just like above how you have dollar sign and then the variable name and then a space and then dollar sign and then the variable name. This is called a string template. It's where you have a uh, variable embedded within the quotes that's being calculated and it's not printing out actual number it's printing out the value that's within inside this number which in this case is going to be three so if i come down here and if i do val full name two equals in quotes and then i do dollar sign 
first name, space, dollar sign, second name. Um, Case S. So that is going to give me um, that is going to give me these two lines will give me the same exact data. Um, this is just doing it with concatenation, which is kind of an outdated way, and this is doing it with um, your string template instead. Another cool thing that we can do within these string templates is we can actually value, evaluate expressions and run functions within them and get the uh, values out of that. So if I have an um, age variable here for a John Smith character, and let's say he's 32 years old, and then we want to add a greeting that includes his age uh, in a string variable, we can do that. We just do greeting equals hello dollar sign first name. You are and then dollar sign, and then after that, instead of just doing age, what you can do is you can do curly brackets, and then within those curly brackets, um, whatever I put there is all going to be evaluated before that we take the value of it using the dollar sign operator. So if I put um, you are age dot to string, it's going to take this integer variable age, which is 32, it's going to convert it to the string equivalent of 32, and then it's going to add it within my string template. Um, so if I go ahead and let's see, you are 32 years old. So now if I take this line and just add another, I'm just going to move that down here. And instead of printing all of this stuff, we're just going to print our greeting. So if I run that, and go back to my logcat window, you can see, hello, John, you are 32 years old. Um, so it's actually evaluating everything in there before converting it to a string. Um, and then there's a couple more useful functions that come with strings that you should just be aware of. One, I can take um, val length equals reading dot. So there's a length, there's a length property, so I can get however many characters long that string is. You also have, um, if I wanted to say, like uppercase val uppercase equals reading dot to uppercase. You can. Um, convert this to entirely uppercase is also a similar thing for to lowercase. And these are, um, of course, deprecated now, so they're not going to be supported indefinitely into the future, but you can use them for now if they are there. And then outside of that, um, a fairly important one is contains. So if you ever need to search a string, you could say, um, uppercase equals greeting dot contains and let's say we're looking for the name um let's say we're looking for john so if uppercase or uppercase is going to be equal to greeting dot contains john so if this greeting contains john uh, which it will in this case then uppercase is going to be set to true and if it contains false, it's going to be, or if it does not contain John, so let's say I spelled that wrong, J-O-N, then it's going to set uppercase to false. And then we can do um, logic with that later. And this, we haven't talked about this yet in this course, but this is called a Boolean variable. Um, and we'll just rename that to string found. Um, but a Boolean variable is essentially a variable that can have uh, one of two values. It can either be true or false, and we use that a lot for logic. Um, so you could check if your string contains John, and then if it does, you're going to run certain um, code based on that finding. From here, if I wanted to make a um, raw string, which is essentially a string where escaping is not necessary, and it can be a multiple line string, I can do it um, just using triple quotes. So val raw string equals, and then if you do three quotes, 
you do three quotes and then um, in the middle of that you could put whatever you want but so I could put like this is a multiple line comment escaping characters is not, is not necessary um so in here obviously I, I just hit enter and that gives me a return character so you don't need to do the backslash n um and i can also have a multiple line comment on a single string so that would be how you do that if you wanted to save like a file path for example um, val sys32 on windows Sys system 32 is a pretty common folder where all of your system files are stored so if we want to save that into a variable um, and if you just copy your path in there it'll be windows system 32. Now this is not going to work uh, because as we mentioned earlier the backslash when your compiler sees the backslash it thinks that you're trying to escape something so escaped capital w and then escaped capital s but those aren't actually any characters which is why it's giving us errors so within this string you have to do um, you have to do double backslashes to escape that or what you can do is you can make that a um, whoops you make that a triple quote string which makes it a raw string you don't have to escape anything within that um, so that's an easy way to do file paths the other way would just be to um, put double backslashes on everything Now there's just one more thing I'll mention before we go, and that's in a string or in a character, you can actually embed Unicode characters as well. So you can do any character on the keyboard or the various backslash characters or anything that you can find in the uh, using a Unicode uh, number as well. So if we want to build a calculator, for example, and we want a division sign, you could just do division sign equals uh, the slash and people use that for division so that would work or instead of that if you want it to look just a little bit better you can do backslash u and that tells the compiler we're doing a unicode character here and then if you do 0, 0, f 7 that's the unicode character for a division sign so if we um, once again move my log right below that and instead of greeting i'm going to print out division sign and if I run my code, go back to logcat, now you can see it gives me the division sign, which is a character that's not on your keyboard. So there's a huge list of all of the possible Unicode characters that you can use. I'll put that down in the description below and you can explore that and look for whatever you need. Um, but just because sometimes it's useful to use characters that um, you won't find on a standard keyboard. Um, just be aware that that's how you can go about doing that. So I hope this video is helpful. Go ahead and play around with strings and um, char variables, and we will see you in the next video.